What's going on guys? Dan Watson and I am holding the brand new Panasonic GH5 and I've been looking forward to this one for a long time. A couple of reasons why. One is this is actually my camera. I purchased this. I don't have to worry about sending it back or anything like that. And the other reason is I've been shooting with a lot of cameras in time. The Panasonic is one brand that I've always loved and it just has never quite been good enough for me to use it for my main business. Now for this, I'm actually shooting this right now in the Panasonic G7. I use that quite a bit. It's pretty much my YouTube camera. I've also used the GH4 quite a bit. And uh, however, when I shoot wedding videography mostly, I have been using the Canon 5D Mark IV the most often. And I shoot in 1080p with this. However, I love shooting in 4K. So I will use the Panasonic G7 for that one. If I ever need some more 4K cameras, I'll get the GH4. But there's some weaknesses with the GH4. And I'm looking really forward to this camera because it looks like not only are some of those weaknesses fixed, but uh, this is a camera that adds so many new features that it makes everything else just not worth it because you're shooting 4K at 60 frames per second and 10 bit if you need it. And so there's so many features inside of this. Uh, I'm looking forward to unlimited recording. And that's something that I've always hated on these cameras because I'm shooting weddings and sometimes you have 45 minute hour long ceremonies. And I'm not needing, uh, you have two card slots on this one. Not only can you shoot from one card to the other, but they're hot swappable while shooting. You can power on this camera. You can shoot all day long if you wanted to on this one. Not just have to worry about that 30 minute time limit. So I have obviously unboxed this because I really was looking forward to that, but I'll show you what else is in here because there's a couple little things that are different about it. And all right, obviously you have all of this stuff. Uh, the first thing on here is the 4K, 6K photo mode. So it's obviously something that they're doing quite a bit of branding on. And it's a really cool feature because it's the only camera that does 6K photos and it shoots them at 30 frames per second. And so you have a camera strap on here. It's a really, uh, I hate the design of this box. It's just a bunch of folds and it's really hard to get a hold of. This is USB-C. So uh, I like USB-C. It's a great port to have. I don't have a lot of USB-C cables, so it's gonna be time to stock up on those and keep that in mind you're gonna want some USB-C cables. The other thing is you have this right here, which is a bracket for the, uh, the ports. You have a full-size HDMI and this will help lock that in. So this is something that I don't believe was ever included in these cameras, so it's nice to see it. You would typically get like a camera cage or something like that to be able to use this, but now uh, I guess it has, does it have screws in here? I guess it has the ability on here to mount directly. It looks like there's a screw location or clips right on there. And so yeah, this will hold your cables and keep those from pulling out on you. So that's a really nice feature. Looking forward to this. Uh, a couple quick impressions. I've had this for a couple hours. I've used it just a little bit. It is built like a tank. Just for comparison, let's see. I've got the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II, and this is small compared to the GH5. And the grip on this just feels puny compared to this, which is more of a full-size feeling camera. It's still smaller than something like the Canon 5D Mark IV. However, it feels very, very good in the hand, just as good, if not better. This actually feels a little chunky now coming from the other one. For my hands, this is actually one of the best fitting cameras that I've used. Now, I know the battery grip on this one, I don't think you need it too much, uh, but that's something that you could get as well if you need a little bit more grip on that. It uses the same batteries as the GH4, that's mostly a good thing. It's a little bit less battery life, but at least you'll have some batteries and plenty of battery options that you can get. So that is probably it for this thing. Uh, yeah, tons of customization options. Going through the menus is actually pretty easy. I didn't have too much trouble. However, I'm coming from Panasonic cameras, so it might be you know a little bit different for you. I will say a lot of this is unusual, this kind of layout for this um, from, uh, from Panasonic on this and the joystick. Let's just talk about the joystick because I just had the A99 here if you wanna check out that review. The A99 had one of the worst joysticks I've ever used. This has gotta be one of the best. It's the most accurate. It's very easy to find. It does stick out a lot. I would worry about jamming that on something. I don't know if it would break or not, but overall it is one of the best feeling joysticks that I have used. Everything on here is just the most resounding clicks. You'll feel very, very comfortable using it. Uh, there's only one port on the side. Another difference, so the uh, this EM1 Mark II has this switch to switch these dials from being, I have them set to shutter speed and aperture, and you can switch them to, I have it set to white balance and your ISO. I don't like this because what happens is you switch, make your settings, and unless you immediately go to switch back and it's a physical switch, 
you'll just keep it there because you'll be shooting while doing this. You make a switch, do that, not switch back. And uh, I'll make go to make a change on my shutter speed and I'll find out I just changed my white balance. And so there's little things like that that are not as good for video shooting, for photo shooting is probably fine, but when you're making changes on the fly. This one, you can program any button to do that as well. You hit the button, it makes that, and as soon as you click something else out of that menu, it goes back to that default setting. I like that a lot. Really, really cool design. All right, so enough on that one for a little bit. There's gonna be so much on there. So definitely subscribe. Also follow me on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, those are the main sources on my Twitter as well, but not as often. And if you wanna see some of the things that I'm doing as I'm doing it, that's where you're gonna to wanna to go because I'm able to post there a lot more than I'm able to post to YouTube. So this is another thing that, it, this is a Xeon Crane and this is the Smooth Q. And if you've seen anything for a while, you know I've been using the Crane uh, gimbal for a while. It is my favorite gimbal so far that I have used, especially for the type of shooting that I am doing. It works really well. I mount the Panasonic on there. This is gonna be a great camera for that because it has built in image stabilization so I can use it with some pretty wide lenses. So when they came out with this one, at first I was like, really? Um, this basically uses your phone as the camera for that. And at first I was like, eh, I don't know if you need that. I've got cameras, why would I wanna use my phone? I started thinking a lot more as I've been getting this and there are a lot of uses for this. And a lot of people on here are shooting in places where you might not wanna bring a full camera system or a camera bag. This is extremely small, lightweight, portable. And then you mount your phone, which you always have with you anyway. Most phones now, if you've got an iPhone 7 or something like that, I've got the Note 5, they can shoot up to 4K if you want to. They can shoot slow motion. A lot of people are using them for, uh, for basically like vlogs and stuff like that. So it is a great tool for that. And having this that goes with your phone is gonna be unbelievable. Look how small this thing is. And it feels really good. It's obviously plastic. There's no grip like there is on the other one, but it's extremely small. And I love how this thing feels. One of the nice things as well is you do have your uh, quarter 20 on this. So if you want, you can set this thing up on a little table tripod, put it there and be shooting vlogs in a minute. The other thing is that this works with your phone. It will charge your phone, USB power to that. Uh, also, you can use your phone for autofocus tracking of your face. So as your phone is looking around and you move in front of it, it will follow you based on facial recognition from, the, from your phone that you're using. Overall, it's just really cool. And so uh, it adjusts a little bit differently than the other one. And the other thing is you can use your phone in portrait or landscape just by flipping that around. And the adjustments are uh, just these screws and they pop out like this. Everything is really smooth. You get uh, just a little bit of adjustment there, but it should be enough for most phones. I think they say about six inches on the phone. So this is how it goes in. Both sides pull out like this and you can fit your phone in there like this. If you're using a thick case, you're gonna have to pull it out of the case. It barely works with this case and this is pretty thin. So that's how this thing is gonna work and then you can balance it and set it up from there. And it looks like it's gonna be really, really cool. If you have some lenses, a lot of people get lenses for their cameras and you can use it with that too. So really looking forward to this actually, a lot more than I thought originally. I think it's gonna have a lot of uses. I think I'm gonna even bring this with me and try and shoot some more. If you wanna stream live to Facebook or YouTube, it's really hard to do that with a big full camera setup. So if you're someone who likes to live stream a lot, having this and being able to just hold it out in front of you and shoot with your main cameras on that, it's gonna be a really nice feature. Make sure it's always tracking your face. So really cool stuff. Uh, stay tuned for more on that one. It does come with a strap as well. So, and a USB, uh, USB, micro USB. So that's how you're gonna charge this thing. And also you can hook this up to your phone uh, via that one. Let me see if it comes with any cables. No, so it doesn't come with any extra cables. So if you have like an iPhone, you're gonna have to use a cable from that one. Stay tuned for more on that one. Uh, tons of good stuff coming. I am so excited about this camera. I get to keep this thing, this is mine. I plan on shooting a lot of stuff. I got a wedding on Saturday. I'm gonna try and set this thing up and use it for that one. And it should be some good fun, so stay tuned.